This is not a big correction. It is a major crash, one that you have not seen in 73, 74, or 80, 82 in your lifetime. I was watching this financial interview on the David Lynn Report with Harry Dent, and there were so many slices I took out that you absolutely need to see. I was even having trouble cutting it down even more because I don't want to have the entire video there, but I've sliced it down to the parts you have to see from Harry Dent talking on the David Lynn Report. David Lynn is one of the most underrated, hardworking financial journalists out there, and I've been watching Harry Dent for a long time. He knows his demographics to a point beyond what anybody else is dealing with and a lot of other stuff too. And I'm gonna mix in a few other financial headlines that are relevant. All of this is gonna be in this video. We're gonna go through it really quickly. Stick with me, this is a really good one. And this is the bubble of our lifetime right now. This is the bubble of our lifetime and bigger than either the 1837 peak or the 29 peak. Nothing in this video should be considered as personalized trading advice for you. The Peter Leeds YouTube channel is about you, your financial understanding, your financial opportunities, the risks to avoid. This is where you learn all about it. So if you subscribe, you'll get more of this information as we build it out and present it to you. And as always, the entire interview that I took these clips from, there's only at the end of the day, a small portion of the entire interview. There's a link to the entire interview below. And I really strongly suggest that you watch the entire video. I'll put another link to it at the end of this video as well. But this is one of those videos that I watched it and I said, everybody needs to sit down, cup of coffee, don't have your kids around, no distractions. Pay attention to this video. Harry Dent was on fire. He had all the right things to say. He's exactly right. And a lot of stuff that I've been telling you that we've been talking about, he's put it in another light. So it'll reinforce your belief in the eventuality even more. Actually, 2022 was the most severe crash for stocks and bonds collectively if you put them together as a percentage of GDP. So in that regard, you were correct. However, it did happen later than you initially anticipated. Why, why, why did it happen later, you think? Oh, that, that's extremely, extremely simple. Never before. Look at the Great Depression. Look at any major downturn. The mid-70s, never before have central banks declared war, literal war on recessions. When he's talking about war on recessions, he's referring to how they answer every problem by just creating new money to help bolster the economy. And anytime they see any kind of pain point, any kind of approaching recession, the first response from the powers that be, the Federal Reserve, the government, is to just douse the problem with a bunch of newly created money. That's what quantitative easing one, two, three, not quantitative easing and quantitative easing infinity were all about. They just keep answering every problem with the same solution, but it's not a solution, is it? Even with all this unprecedented $9 trillion for the Fed alone and money printing, never have we seen even a fraction of that, okay? Even with all of that, we keep falling back in a recession. We just came, <laughs> we just came out of the COVID downturn, and with all this massive stimulus, ten trillion dollars, half of it fiscal, half of it monetary, the biggest single two-year stimulus in all of history, topping everything before that, and we're already falling in a recession again. And this YouTube channel is about you. It's about. Your wealth is about you seeing the opportunities, you understanding the markets in the way that is a little bit different than what you're being told by all the mainstream media and some of these figureheads that are talking about the economy to you, telling you it's all good, everything's good, we're going to be growing, things are solid. In part of this video, you're going to see, especially the comments from Harry Dent that I pulled out a few of them, that the economy itself is just like I've always been telling you. Underneath the surface, it's so much weaker than anyone realizes and that anyone's talking about. Just about anyone. Check this out. That's the problem. The economy underneath is really, really weak and really needs to get rid of a lot of really bad debt and zombie companies. And the central banks won't let the economy do its thing. Oh, we're free market capitalists. No, we're not. I've long told you guys that we don't have true capitalism anymore. We have a pseudo hybrid version of capitalism where people help the interest groups they want to help. They don't let the free market make the decisions about what kinds of companies should still be around, should thrive, which ones should go out of business. When they have too big to fail, when they've got money paying off student loan debts but not helping people who have already paid off all their debts, it's a messed up, convoluted system. 
And I'm not saying that it wasn't good to pay off student loan debts. I'm just saying that they make decisions like that or too big to fail or they say, okay, we have to create new money to pay off these banks that are going insolvent. This is all a different version of something that is certainly not capitalism. Capitalism has never failed in the history of mankind. It always allows people to move towards what they want to move towards, to acquire what they want to acquire. People who make wise decisions get benefited from that. That is how capitalism works. And we have not seen true capitalism in a long, long time. We have not cleaned up the massive debts and, and, and overvaluations of finance, the biggest financial asset bubble in everything. We've never had a financial asset bubble in everything like this. This bubble has not been allowed to burst and clear out its excesses, which we need to do. And I think we're, we're, we're into that process now. The IMF cuts the GDP forecasts for the world. They say the global economy is heading for the weakest growth since 1990. That's exactly right. It's a global recession that we're going to be facing something unlike anything we've ever seen before. Even Europe, a lot of countries in Europe are already in recession. Others are teetering on the edge of recession. Negative growth is the new order of the day. So that's worldwide. That's going to affect America too, of course, but it's worldwide. I mean, you want to take a look at closer to home. How are things looking here in America? These headlines also came out literally this morning. 53% of Americans say they don't have any emergency savings. Something that you already knew, but again, a new headline talking about it. And it's not getting better. It's just getting worse. Correction, look, what looks like a correction now, keeps going down, builds on itself, and turns into a crash more like 1929 to 32, down 86% on the S&P 500. That's my best forecast at this time. And one of the reasons you want to subscribe to this channel is that we've got a lot of videos we're working on right now that are coming up in the next few days. One of them is about the big inflationary bounce that's coming up. Plus also the debt you believe. We're going to talk about that as well. So make sure you subscribe to the channel to get the benefit of all this information we're putting together for you so that you can enhance your financial understanding. It's going to hit between now and about mid-June. So this is the time to be cautious on stocks. This is a really good time to lighten up or get out of stocks and see if this crash happens. Because if it does, we could be down 50% on the NASDAQ from the top, literally by mid-June or so. And I got one more for you. 58% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck, including many who are earning six figures. That's according to a CNBC survey. That is just a reflection of the problems of the economy. In my view, an economy should support lifestyles that you want, give you a lot of opportunities to try and achieve more if that's what you're so desiring to do. And if you don't want to do that, you don't have to do it, but you can make a good enough of a living from whatever job that you're interested in or what you're good at. And as an economy gets healthier and stronger, you pay less taxes, fewer people are living paycheck to paycheck, people start having savings, they start paying down debt. That's what you want. We haven't seen anything like that in about 20 years. That you cannot cure except by printing money. And what the problem with printing money is it creates financial asset bubbles which then will burst badly. We see a bubble now bigger and higher than the 95 to 2000 bubble and people somehow think we'll come out of this with a soft landing because we didn't let the first crash do what the economy would have loved to do, just clear out a lot of bad debt and zombie companies, which David, as you know, I mean, both of those are at record levels. I mean, I can't even compare this debt bubble and the number of zombie companies which they didn't even use to measure. Recessions are the cleaning agent, the rebalancing agent, every time we have a boom and things get a little overdone and sloppy and, and excessive and inefficient. All this stimulus did was to create a second artificial bubble on top of the natural one that first hit in 2000 and crashed. And you gotta remember, the NASDAQ in 2000, 2002 crash with only a, a mild recession was down 78%. In this part, he mentioned something very important I want you to pay attention to. There are good things that can come out of a recession. Even though a recession is mostly on balance, bad for all businesses, all savers, all consumers, all people. The recession, though, does work 
to shake out the weak hands, get rid of the companies that are on the bubble that aren't as financially secure, as fiscally solid, and then you're left with something that's a lot stronger. Kind of like you got to go through the pain point to get to the next iteration of what will become a new bull market where everything is going up again just like it was 10 years ago. you got to get to that point where the economy is growing again, where savings are increasing while people are being able to meet their bills and have a quality of life that they expect. Central banks kind of get, get run over or, or lose control there. The markets are going to go down and usher in a deep debt detox. It's a debt detox is the best thing to call it. You basically need to wash out a lot of bad debts and zombie companies which shouldn't exist. In this part, Harry gives some predictions about where he thinks stocks are going to go. And he also gets into a few other asset classes, including cryptocurrencies. I'm predicting the S&P will go down 86%, the NASDAQ 92, and guess what? The crypto sector, Bitcoin being, because there isn't a, a good enough index, will go down more like 95, 96%. And if you're a cryptocurrency enthusiast, just stick with it a little longer because Harry has a different view about the long-term outlook for cryptocurrencies. And I agree 100% with what he's saying. It's going to have a bit of a washout until we get to a capitulation point. And then, he didn't say capitulation point, that's my word. And then, cryptocurrencies are going to be world money. They will be around your entire life. They'll increase in value a tremendous amount after we have the washout period first. The, the, the Bitcoin will fall from 69,000 to about three to 4,000, David. And that, and people say, oh my, then people will say, oh, well, that was just total BS. Oh, it, it, was, it was just a big hoax. No, it's exactly what Amazon and the dot coms did. The size of this crypto bubble says to me, this is not a joke. This is the next big thing happening. It, 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 it monitors and, 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 and echoes the, the, the dot-com bubble perfectly, and the crash should be equally bad, 95 to 96%, which is what, what Amazon and the dot-coms went down, and then have the great, a great boom for decades to follow. The best way to look at this next downturn, if I'm right, it'll be 50% worse than 2008 to nine, and that is the worst downturn any of us have seen in our lifetime. The early 80s, and the 73 to 75 downturn were not as strong as unemployment or stock crashes as that one. This is going to be stronger than that, if I'm right. And pay attention to what he says about real estate prices. He's right on with this stuff. I am in the same camp as he is. And I very rarely find people who agree with me in my views on all sorts of different asset classes like Harry has in this particular interview. That's why I wanted you to see the whole interview. It's so important you really pay attention to it because this stuff is real. This stuff is happening and it's going to matter to you. We had a first real estate bubble in 2000 and then a second one now. Real estate is the most unaffordable it's ever been. So, so real estate is what's going to hit people the hardest. And we will not, we probably will not, and I've been predicting this for a long time, not just really, we will not see the peak real estate prices we've seen here for the rest of our lifetimes, if ever. This next part is talking about the reality of the economy the way most people see the economy and that's two things that are going to come together and this is how it's all going to play out at that point watch this next clip that's what it's about that's when people understand this is not a correction this is this is not something can be fixed by money printing we are in a deep downturn and then they get scared and then it's hard to get them spending money again because they're scared and they should be scared. So definitely subscribe because we got a couple of videos we're working on right now that are coming out really soon about the debt jubilee and also about the big, huge inflationary bounce that's all coming up, setting up right now. And if you've been following me for any length of time, you know that a lot of stuff that I talk about is playing out exactly. And this is stuff I talked about when everybody else seemed to be saying the exact opposite thing. And now it's playing out exactly. The good news here, and I know that it doesn't sound like there's a lot of good news, but there's plenty of good news because there's many moves that you can make in any event, any scenario that you probably should make and possibly could make to better your position, land on your feet, help the people you care about. So what's causing a recession? What does it look like? How is it going to affect you?